Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Tales of Berseria with Alexa Berseria Games. On the last episode, we went through the Warg Forest in order to collect the Salatoma, um, which we did. We also collected a bug, because why the heck not? And then Zavid decided to show up and take Aizen with him. Um, or rather, Aizen went after Zavid, and now we have to give the Salatoma flowers to Benwick. So, let's just get on with it, shall we? Hi there, Benwick! We've brought back your Salatomas. Drink up. You've saved us! But where's the first mate? We bumped into some wannabe tough guy Moloch and he just took off after him. What? That must have been Zavid! Why didn't you guys follow him? And leave you all with the Corsair Scourge? Yes! Aizen's the one in danger here. Is it because the Abbey is after Zavid? So you even knew about it? I heard the details from a merchant who deals with the Abbey. Some big-shot exorcist named Melchior has set up a trap for Zavid and Loringen. If Aizen gets caught up in that, he might not make it out alive. So now there's Melchior to worry about. Why is Lord Melchior assuming direct command to capture Zavid? Wait, that's not important. What matters is I can turn Lafayette's head over to him and finally return to the Abbey. Melchior is a legate. A powerful enemy. Trap or no. Ugh, you guys are useless! Well, fine. If you're not going to go help him, we will. What makes you think you're capable of being any help? Would you let an ally get slaughtered just because you were scared? What? We want to save him. Maybe we'll lose. It still won't stop us. We are the ones who decide our fates. Only us. That's just the creed of Eifried's pirates. You're a real hothead, you know that? Nobody said anything about not helping Aizen. Huh? You all stay here, take your medicine like good little boys, and be ready to welcome back your first mate and captain. The captain? Why else would Aizen knowingly barge into a trap, if not to save Eifried? Ah, uh, <laughs> of course! Leave the ship and crew to me. Here, this one's for you. Those pirates haven't a lick of sense in them. They don't let reason dictate who they protect. <sighs> if you say so, demon. <coughs> now... About where Aizen's headed. Those exorcists were talking about some place called Loringen. Yes. It's a tower in the northern part of Westgand where the exorcists train. Lines up with what Benwick told us. That must be the place. There must be a lot of exorcists. Hang in there, Aizen. That'll take more than basic exorcists to do him in. We ought to pity any poor exorcists who meet the Reaper. Right! Let's work together and find him! Yeah, Eyes is not about to be done in by some exorcists. Gosh, he's... Yeah. Oh, look at Dial over there! With Kuragane! They're just fishing. <laughs> oh, so casual. Hi. The captain and the skipper are all, are all yours. We'll all be on our feet by the time you get back. I hope so. You better be. Right, uh, I don't need to do anything, do I? Probably not. I don't think I need to buy anything either, so I might as well just head on then. We can start heading towards Loringen in the north. Isn't that exciting? Okay, um... Hi, do you have a thing for me? Uh, I don't need another chip copper coin, I have a lot. Uh, uh, Solitoma is as awful as I remember. I'd hoped I'd never have to drink it again. Are you all right, Eleanor? Is this your second experience with the Corsair Scourge? No, I had it for a different reason. In the Abbey, it's tradition for initiates to drink Solitoma as part of their welcoming festivities. Sounds like hazing to me. When everyone shares the same experience, drinking something so shockingly revolting, our bonds are strengthened. It's a good thing. If you say so. I really did believe I'd never have to taste it again. To be blunt, I hate it. 
You're lucky you think it tastes so terrible. That means you also know what tastes good. Right, Velvet? <sighs> what does that mean? Velvet can't taste anything aside from blood. What? Is that because she's a demon? I'm aware of one other flavor. Mogulu, here's your dose of Solitoma. <laughs> no! Get back here! <laughs> Don't! Keep that salad away from... I, I see. The sweet taste of another suffering. That's very velvet. We have another skit here and a logical bunch. Why does it seem like everyone around me is completely mad? Yeah! Continuing to fight when you know you'll lose just is insane! Would you... Stand around and watch your comrade die, just because you're scared. I wouldn't want to, but getting myself killed wouldn't save anyone either. Yes, it would be illogical to fight. Is being illogical really that bad? Well... At the Empyrean's throne, I remember Velvet standing, despite the horrible pain she felt. Rokuro is training with all his heart in order to defeat his brother Shigure. And Kurogane used up his own head to forge a powerful blade. None of that is very logical. Yeah, I don't know quite how to put it, but I think it's all amazing. <laughs> Aren't you forgetting someone? Hmm? Uh, Magi Lu is traveling with us, even though she doesn't care. And that... Yes, go on. I don't really understand what that's about. Ah! Uh. <gasps> Miss Mogulu, hang in there! <laughs> <laughs> well, it is amazing in some sense, I suppose. Right you are, Eleanor. Anyway, let's talk to some people, because it looks like we have some new conversations around here. Um, oh no, they're all old ones. Um, okay, so maybe we don't have new conversations. We do have one speech bubble, though, so we can go and have a look at that. Hello. Hello there. You're headed to Loringen Tower, too? Just a bit ago, a brawny, silver-haired man asked me how to get there. Did he say why he was going there? Something about meeting some friends of his. Exorcists use that tower to train, right? If he has exorcist friends, then maybe he's one, too. But he seemed a bit rough and tumble to be an exorcist. I can't imagine a man like him. Did he say anything else? He said someone else might stop by and ask about the tower, and told me to tell him if they do. Did he mean you? <sighs> no clue. So he was planning on us following him. What's he scheming? You mean Zavid? Or the Abbey? Both. Zavid has a lot of things up his sleeves. Loring Tower is an old ruin north of the Fens of Nog, on the west side of the Burdak Plateau. Now the Abbey controls the place and will let anyone near it. Trespassers are dealt with harshly. Well, doesn't sound like that's going to be a problem for Demon Velvet. Uh, yeah, I'm going to sleep at the inn, because um, apparently that restores your BG. Thank you again to the person who commented saying that. That's really useful to know. <laughs> Hold on, do I have- I have 76,000 gold. I have a lot of money. I should really use it. Or I can save it up for any, any time I need to enhance or dismantle anything. Er, uh, yeah no, I just bought stuff before, I don't need to buy anymore. Okay, I'm good, I'm good. Let's go. Oh, it's sunny here now. Loringen Tower lies beyond the Burnak Plateau. Blah! If you're gonna set up an obvious trap, couldn't it at least be someplace more convenient? I'm gonna run back into town and run back out again. I don't want to fight any of those witches, and if they come after me, I'm actually gonna be very sad. It's it's really sunny now. Like, it was not this sunny before. And I don't think I've seen it ever be this sunny in the Plitzback Wetland in Zisteria. It's always so grey and dismal there. Oh man, okay. Yoink! Thank you for the mushroom. It'll probably come in handy at some point. I'm mostly just avoiding the fights at the moment because I want to get to the um, Burnak Plateau. 
as soon as I possibly can. Luckily, I know my way around these parts, so... I know what way we're going. It's cool. Um, okay. Yoink. Oh, hello. Another witch. Don't, don't get in a fight with me. Do not get in a fight with me. This game and hysteria at the moment are just me running around going, do not get in a fight with me. And then just the demons or the hellions being like, we go and do it anyway. Please don't get in a fight with me. Okay, uh, looks like the guards have moved away from here so we can actually go through this cave now. Oh man, I'm sure you all know, um, if you've, again, if you've watched my Let's Play of Hysteria or if you've played the game yourself, you already know where we're going. <sighs> What's wrong, Lafie said? I was just wondering why Aizen and Zavid can't work together to find Eifried. All men their age care about is their reputation, their street cred. Such a hassle. Oh, really? Well, I can't fully deny it. <sighs> the same could be said of women, and of everyone, really. It's hard to work alongside someone unless you strive to understand their thoughts and feelings. And if you can't? Well, um... It's like Zavid said, you start talking with your fists instead. Sounds harder than I thought. Yeah, I think Zavid knows a thing or two about talking with his fists. Um, looking at you, Zisteria. Right. We have 998! I want to get to 1000! Oh, I wonder if I can quickly get to 1000. Are there any more? Also, Cat's Box. Really? Oh man, that's where a monolith was in Zisteria. I think I know where all the monoliths are. But then I just missed one. Ugh. Yay, I've got a thousand and one cat souls! A thousand and two cat souls! Yay! Let's go and spend most of them. Actually, not most of them. I collected a lot of cat souls when I was grinding. We found the cats! Got a Shiba in your tail! <laughs> Let's have a look at that on, um. Maybe we can have a look at it on. Err. Let's put it on Lapiset. Okay, Shiba Inu tail. Try expressing your mood with this dignified tail. Oh, it glitches into his um, little bag. But it's cute. Oh man, I don't think I actually ever put it on any of the characters in this game. I don't know. I feel like they're best suited to certain types of characters. I don't know. Here we are, the Burnak Plateau. It may not look it, but this, in a thousand years' time, will be Zafkot Mur. It looks nothing like it, it's great! Um, okay, let's not get in too many fights. Also, hey Breed Wolf, how you doing? Oh, I want to get that chest. I can get past you. I can get past you. They notice you, but they never come after you, which is good. Oh, nice gold. And it looks like we have a little something here, so let's have a look at that. Whoa! Hot water is spouting out of the mountain! And look at those rainbows. This is one of the seven wonders of the world, the Burnak Geyser. The water heats up from underground until the pressure forces it to spray up from the surface. And the rainbows are caused by light reflecting from the salt suspended in the mineral water. It took tens of thousands of years for the minerals to accumulate here and form this phenomenon. Wowee! That was very educational. At least you know plenty of trivia, if nothing else. Additionally, the groundwater veins that feed this geyser are connected to the sea. Because of this, every now and then a boiled octopus or crab will shoot out from the geyser! No way! That's impossible! Well, not impossible, but with the salt content of the geyser's water, I bet they're seasoned to perfection. Magulu, I'm declaring your bizarre imagination the eighth wonder of the world. People say that all the time. I love you, Magulu. <laughs> Also, that means that there are seven wonders of the world in this universe as well. I wonder what they are. And then they have like seven wonders of the Abbey as well, don't they? Because I think Eleanor mentioned that earlier. I can't remember who she said was the eighth wonder of the Abbey or whatever, but she said something like that. Oh lord, okay. Oh, it's ready to fight. Oh, I'm not ready to fight! Okay, this is fine. Oh, I've not got eyes in anymore. Yeah. 
Wow, all sorts of things popped out. Yep, it's a whimsical wonderland over here. Papa Set's cute. There he goes to sleep. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I should have seen that fight coming, but it's fine. We managed it. Uh, can I, can I get to that? Oh, do I have to go from the other side? Uh, oh, hello. Okay, fine, I'll fight you. I'll cut down anyone in my way. So I got a thing called Heaven's Claw, um, which I looked at and I thought, hold on, that's the name of Velvet's Mirage Art in um, Tales of the Rays. <laughs> oh, rip Tales of the Rays worldwide. That was a good game. Okay, um, Heaven's Claw. While in Therian form with three or more souls, hold R2 after a combo star or cost one soul. Launches a foe into the air and it has a chance to knock them down. Um, seems cool. I've not used it very much. Um, I also got Lapiset's second break soul thing, which is Static Force. I haven't used Divide Pain very much though, so yeah, I don't know what to do with it. And uh, I don't think anyone else actually has- she has Calamity Flare now? Oh, that's awesome! Uh, yeah, I don't think anyone else has theirs. Okay, cool. Oh, my expedition returned. Let's have a look at that. Great. Let's do this one run get you style, guys. It's so quiet without eyes in here. Okay, uh, let's go back there again. We've still not got the other things we need, so... I want that attachment. <laughs> I really want that attachment. Okay, let's go through here. Aizen! Did you get the medicine to the ship's crew? Yeah. Good. My thanks to you. These soldiers won't be happy in the morning, but they're alive. Is this your work? No. They were like this when I got here. It must have been Zavid. He didn't kill a single one. Interesting. The Abbey is going to great lengths to arrest him. Even so, he clearly knows he's walking into a trap. What I don't get is why he roped me into all of this. If he didn't want my help, then what need did he have to play the Eifried card on me? If you knew this was a trap, why did you come? To see for myself. When I met Eifried, I was wallowing in despair that I would ever find a way to break the Reaper's curse. Stop denying reality, he told me. If you were really born with that curse, then it's a part of you. But if the Reaper learns to grasp the wheel of his life, even he may find his creed, his path through stormy waters. And so, I joined him aboard the Von Eltia. A creed of life. Let's say someone's murdered the captain. If it came as the result of him living life on his terms, I could accept that. <sighs> but if anyone, and I mean anyone, tries to crush his way of life, I could never forgive them. Who's there? It's rude to eavesdrop. If you got secrets, talk about them at home. Zavid, isn't there any way you and Aizen can work together somehow? Not if he's going to keep acting like this. <clears throat> well, that's how it is. What was the point of all that posturing? He could have just stayed hidden. Weirdo. Can't disagree there. Maybe he wanted to say something, but then he didn't get the chance to because you asked him the question. Then he was like, well, I ain't gonna say anything now. Who knows? Sabine is a mysterious person. That was such a useless cat. Wow. Okay, let's have a look at this um, skit here. Exorcist ranks. Loringen Tower is a training ground for exorcists, right? Yes. It's a great edifice built on ancient ruins. Luffy said, did you ever go there when you were tethered to Teresa? I don't really remember the beginning of my service to Teresa. I see. What sort of training do they do there? Exorcists are tested and assigned Malachim equivalent to their aptitude with mana. It's also where they practice Malak arts and study our laws. So the lower ranks use it as a sparring ground in order to train up to the higher ranks? No, an exorcist's affinity to mana is not something that strengthens through training. 
We are given Malachim based on our inborn ability, then learn arts to suit that ability. So, an orderly is an orderly for life, then? Correct. There'd be no spirit of competition, then. Don't they want to get stronger, to advance through the ranks? There'd be no purpose to advancement. Rank signifies nothing more than the type and number of Malachim one can tether. People join the Abbey for only two reasons. To protect people from demons, and to save the world. Are all of you that dedicated to asceticism? How sickeningly noble of you. I wonder if your wills are suppressed just like those of the Malachim you use. Deviants like you could never possibly understand our motives. In any case, that is who awaits you at Loringen Tower. So we're in for a rough welcome. I say bring it on. Of course you say bring it on, you're a fighter. Speaking of, a brawler, not a killer. I can't wrap my head around Zavid. Hmm. We witnessed his unwillingness to kill before, but it seems he's quite serious about it. Maybe that's why I don't feel scared of him. Even when he and Aizen were about to fight, I didn't feel tense at all. Perhaps that's just because you've been around Velvet a bit too long, kiddo. Next to her, few people are frightening. Do you think so? Don't ask me. <laughs> he doesn't come across as vicious. I think that's why you're not scared. Because he's just a brawler? <laughs> Maybe he's just naive. Okay, so he's just a naive brawler. He's still involved with Eifried's disappearance, and he's also taking on the Abbey. I just don't get him. Me neither. Uh-huh. I agree, but I don't understand any of you either. I love Eleanor. <laughs> She's just so out of place in this party, it's great. Oh man, is this where the Oasis is later on? I think it might be. Uh... It might be, who knows. Right. Yeah, let's just keep going. <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm making myself confused. Right. Yeah, that... Huh. That must be where the... Um... I don't know. I don't know. This place is, um, very, very different from how it is in Zisteria. But that's a good thing. It's so interesting to see the differences for me. I don't get it. Get what? Why did Eifried let Aizen join his ship, knowing he carried the Reaper's curse with him? What good did it do? I just don't see the reason behind it. Well, if it were me who had that curse, it would mean that you and Velvet could die because of it, right? Yeah, I suppose so. If that's the case, then I'd feel like I'd both want to and not want to be close to you two. And I'd probably really, really hate myself for it. Do you suppose that's how Aizen feels? But Eifried still took him in. He agreed they put up with the curse together. It's all a bit hard to fathom. Well, if one thing's for certain, it sounds like Eifried's a very strong man. At least for a base lawless pirate. Oh, Eleanor, you're softening up a bit. That's good, though. Yeah, listen up. Relax those shoulders, and the way will make itself clear. Aizen? Can I ask you about that thing Savid had? It belonged to Eifried, didn't it? I've read much of the Abbey's archives and weaponry, but I've never seen anything like it. He found it when we crossed to the Far Continent. It's a relic from a long-vanished civilization. He's like me and can't resist a good treasure. But of everything we've found, that one was his most prized. What is it? I can't say. It seemed like a weapon, but Eifried wouldn't let anyone touch it. He went off and tested it on his own, then came back all grinning, saying he had an ace up his sleeve the next time we got into a fight. Then it's definitely some sort of ancient combat device? But why is Zavid looking for Eifried? To apologize for stealing it? He doesn't seem like that much of a gentleman. Did he really steal it? What do you mean? It's just my feeling, but... Zavid doesn't seem like the type of Moloch to steal something so precious. He said he just picked it up. Perhaps he's trying to return it. Perhaps. Hmm, interesting. All right, let's jump down here because there's a whole bunch of crap that we can pick up, like all these cat souls. And also, there's a dungeon here. Um, it's just an extra kind of one that you can go through. 
Um, I think it maybe comes up in one side quest somewhere. Um, but hey, what what is the point in not going through it? <laughs> Why not? All right, here we are, the East Laban Tunnel, the Underground Passage. Err. Uh, now, obviously, as you are aware, we were just in the area that will later become Zafgot Moor. Um, so it may come as absolutely no surprise to hear that this will later be um, the Trizold Cave, which is one of the extra rune dungeon tunnels that's in Zestaria. This I don't know if I can deal with this escape system. Why did they implement it? Is it just to make it harder to escape from battles? Because the enemies are gonna keep coming after you while you're trying to escape. They're not gonna let up. Uh, but yeah, that's like my main kind of qualm about the game. My other one is that skits pop up all the time everywhere without warning. Um, it was fine when I was playing through the game by myself, but like doing a let's play I've realised that it can become really annoying if you're trying to like talk about something and then suddenly the characters just start talking. Um, I mean obviously it happened- woo okay calm down. It happened occasionally in Zestaria with dialogue and stuff but never with skits. And it was always like short dialogue, which was fine. Um, whereas in, obviously in Berseria, which we're playing now, um, they just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk forever. And in these skits, they just interrupt you all the time without any warning whatsoever. And most of the scenes are skits. Which, like, I understand. They were trying to get the game out really quickly after Zestaria. Um, and, like, certain aspects of both games suffered for that. But... That's the thing. The I wouldn't have minded if this game would come out a little bit later just because they were trying to animate more 3D scenes, you know? I, I like skits well enough, but... Isn't it cooler to be able to actually see the characters doing the things that they're talking about? Or like talking to each other and things? I don't know. We got another drop earring anyway. Um, let's have a look at the other drop earring. I guess we stop from complaining anyway. Our drop earring right. Um, it's got the same description as the drop earring left which you've already seen. Um, and yeah, it's the same kind of thing you saw on the other side. So now we actually have a pair of earrings. Uh, that. There we go. We're not wearing them though. Although now I could do the whole symmetry thing for um, Eleanor. And uh, she can have both earrings. She doesn't actually strike me as the type of person who would wear jewellery though. Or like, not in this outfit anyway. Like maybe if she was going to a party or something but... Uh, we're not at a party though. We're at a demon hunting party maybe. Actually it's currently a Zabit hunting party right? <laughs> He's definitely not a demon. Uh, but yeah. Those are just my main two complaints about the game. Um, I mean, there are other things that I find kind of iffy about the game. I remember um, one of my main issues with it in my first playthrough was that a lot of the time I'd be in a battle um, and they would start talking and then suddenly someone would pull off a mystic art, usually Aizen, um, and then the dialogue would be gone. Uh, as I've currently got my strategy, they won't use Mystic Hearts at all. Um, which helps in those kind of situations. However, it doesn't change the fact that in my first playthrough I missed a lot of the dialogue before battles because, or at the start of battles, because Aizen would just decide to pull off um, perfect mayhem for no reason. He just wanted to cause mayhem. And it's like, God, God, Eisen, really? Could you not have picked a better time? Uh, apparently not, but whatever. It's fine. Um, you know, at least there's a way of getting around that. The sudden skits, the crappy escape mechanism, you can't get away from those. 
you know, if we're doing story stuff, I find it difficult to actually talk about stuff because it's like, oh, well, I'm probably going to get interrupted by the characters doing another skit, you know? But I like all of the content as well. I love that they've given us so much content in this game. Um, Berseria has so much more, like, conversation and side stuff than you really get in Zisteria. And that's one of the things that I can say this game did really well on. Um, Zisteria not so much. <laughs> Although I love Zisteria, as I've said before, but there are obviously issues with Zisteria and I can completely admit that. So yeah, that's enough complaining about this game. I do enjoy it. I really like this game. Um, I play it again as maybe appreciate it more, I think. I think especially because I have just done that let's play of Zisteria and now I'm getting to see you guys um, talk about Berseria with me as well. I like how it is, um, both in relation to Zisteria and on its own as well. It's just really interesting to see everyone's opinions. Um, and it's helping me to, I don't know, enjoy the game even more, I suppose. Because I will admit I mostly enjoyed the game the first time because of the familiarity. <laughs> Because I was like, oh wow, look at all this stuff from Zisteria. But I'm learning to appreciate the characters and stuff a lot more as well, which is good. I'll cut down anyone in my way. Nice. Oh, we learned Annihilate and Crash. Some Mystic Arts are of a higher class and cost 4 BG and require a combo of 8 or higher. But they also increase maximum BG by 1 when learned and provide 2 souls after use. It may seem like they require 8 souls to perform, but including break souls within the combo will help fulfil the requirements. Since damage from Mystic Arts is affected by the greater of the user's attack and art attack, and the lesser of the, the target's defence and art defence, they are highly effective damage dealers. Dude, really? Oh, that's awesome! Nice! Uh, hold on, where is that? There we go. Yes, we got Annihilate and Crash! Uh, hold L2 uh, during an 8 hair higher combo consumes 4 BG. Use Break Soul to connect combos. That's cool. Oh, I can't wait to try that out later. I'll be terrible at it, but it's cool. Okay, fight me. Alright, let's grab these. Let's grab that. This is where we find a, a Norman. I can't remember which Norman it was. It might have been Void. Anyway, here we are back at... Um, the bit before Vortigern. Yeah, that's cool. Anyway, let's uh, not go through there. We don't need to. Um, I want to go and head on with the story. That is a herb. How did I miss this herb? Okay. Let's head on with the story, shall we? And go on to our next area. <laughs> Here we are. Lorigan. Or, um, it may have become obvious, but Logren. <laughs> Oh man, I am so glad we've made it here. This is so cool. <laughs> no one on guard? They're really not bothering to hide this trap. They probably knew we'd sense it. The question now is just what they're planning to spring on us. Well, guess we'll find out. Um, okay, let's grab this. Um, I don't think there's anything over there. Maybe a merchant talking about some elephants stamping on caravans. <laughs> Here we are, luring in the Tower of the Exorcists. Dude, this place has not changed. I mean, it has, but dude, it's immediately recognisable as Logren from Zisteria. I mean, these... Wow, these walls were really tall. The only thing that I'm confused about is these parts? Like... Whatever this weird glowy blue stuff is, it's like some sort of liquid. Um, I don't think these lowered parts are here later on. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they got destroyed when it got ruined. Oh my god, hey, that's where the inn is and that's where the shop is and the Matryoshka dolls with them, Yuri and Tipo. Oh, man. I love being here. It's so cool. <laughs> and it, this is where we find it, Norman. This is where the turtles was. If this is a... oh god, what was it? It wasn't a Maroon Glossé, it was like a Pamier or something. There was in a purple church, a purple church, purple chest, a gold chest over here, but now it's in an oaf ball here. It was a stack in this area. Oh man, I'm such a nerd. I'm just nerding out right now. 
Imagine if Saray and McLeo could see it as it is now. They've been nerding out so much. <laughs> because they must have wondered, like, oh, I wonder what happened to Logan. What was it used for initially? All right, let's go up these stairs. Aizen, when and how did Ifri disappear exactly? And how did you two meet in the first place? You know, you ask an awful lot of questions about us. What? I don't mean to pry, really. Perhaps it's a habit I picked up from my work. Drat, it seems I've been digging too hard. No matter. Eifried vanished about a year ago. <sighs> he agreed to fight a duel against someone, and secretly left to meet his opponent. Once we figured out what was happening, we rushed to the scene. But all we found was the aftermath of a fight, and a pendulum. Was Zavid his opponent? Given his choice of weapon and his ability to fight, I'd say it's likely. What I don't get is why Eifried would end up captured and imprisoned by the Abbey after a fight with a stray Moloch. The Abbey had him prisoner? On their island. Until an exorcist named Melchior took him away, that is. What? Lord Melchior did? The Abbey would have captured Eifried about a year ago. Surely it must have caused quite a stir. I was simply patrolling. I wasn't involved in any such operations. Oh, but I do remember that we suffered a great number of casualties around that time. I never heard why, and when I went to investigate, I found no records of any major deployment. And then I was ordered to cease any such investigation by Lord Melchior. That's fishy. He wanted to hide something clearly, and I think I'm starting to get a picture of what it was. And... It involves the Abbey? Well, I mean, he is an exorcist, Eleanor. I think most of what he does involves the Abbey. Let's head into this room. Oh my god, this room. <laughs> it's so cool. Seeing all of these places and what they were used for before. Like, this was like maybe a mess hall or something? There's like tables. Mess hall storage room. You couldn't find anything in here in Steria other than a fight. <laughs> So it's, it's really cool to see it as it is now. Oh man, that's cool. Alright, um, let's head over this way and up the stairs, which we never got to go up in Zisteria because they were gone. Oh man, this is so cool. Look at all these plants. How do they survive in here? Like, isn't there a roof? The tower is so tall I can't actually see. We're spending all of our cat souls really quickly. Hmm. I do like all of the plants that they have though. It makes it feel very lively, I guess. But it's very, well, more calm and serene actually rather than lively. Um, ooh, expedition! Take a look at this. Quitting is the same as defeat. Yes! Nice! There's no better victory than a safe return. Eye of newt and mushroom spore, tender parts of prickle bore! Nice! Awesome! Okay, now we just have to get the attachment. Please give me the attachment soon. Scout ship setting sail. Um, nice. We're doing well for the Norman Islands. Oh, it would have been so cool to get the attachment just there, but we didn't, so that's fine. Right, let's grab all these cat souls because they are blessing us with a bountiful amount. Simple ribbon, nice. Oh, actually, you could probably put that on Eleanor because she's. Oh no, that's that's the same as that one. Okay. Although that does put up her HP. It takes down her defense though. Uh, nah. I'd rather not take down defense too far. <laughs> anyway, now we can um go on and do what I've been dying to do for this entire Let's Play, um, and that is move on with the story. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I'm so excited, guys. You'll you'll understand why soon, don't worry. <laughs> Alright, let's head on him. I freed. So... This is Von Eifried. Eisen, it's good to see you again. So you're alive. 
You could have sent a letter. <laughs> when have you ever written a letter to another man? <laughs> True. Aside from my little brother, not even once. Your brother? Ah, yes. You told me that once. Eisen, why? I've got no brother. Enough of your tricks! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for luring them out. I owe you one. Zavid. Now come on out, you old coot! Lord Melchior. Breaking through my double illusion. Impressive. I'm making a point not to fall for the same tricks twice. I shouldn't have let you get away last time. I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> what? Why am I here? Her consciousness has returned, so that is its power. into a demon. What? This can't be happening. The chain reaction. Your Reaper's curse is quite the dreadful affliction, isn't it? Don't you run away! Fight. We're fighting some legendary weapons. Um, okay. Right. Uh, this might be fun. Why would an exorcist create a demon? Hey, worry about that later. We've got damn dragons to take care of. Uh, okay, I didn't even hit it. That's fine. Okay. Woo! I don't know if they're likely to stun, so this might be fun. Um, okay. A skull is fine. This is fine. This is cool. Oh, ow, okay. Alright. Oh! Oh, okay, that's fine. I should really be used to their attacks, actually. Nope. Like, their attacks haven't really changed from how they are in Hysteria. Because, like, the wyvern type enemies always have that stupid that thing. Hi. Yeah, these are the exact same attacks that wyvern type enemies had in Hysteria. Which makes sense. If I could totally theorize it, I would, but I can't, so that's helpful. Oh, thank you for using Maelstrom. It doesn't look as cool in this game. Okay, this is cool. I have four now. Oh, so I should left. Okay, ooh. Okay. Dang it, I thought I was gonna get the power hit on that. Looks like you got caught in your own trap, old man. Oh, are you sure about that? What the? I'll take care of the last one. He 
just... save the Wyvern? You folks jump in and kill without a second thought! Is that your creed? Marvelous. Your Siegfried is just the power I've been looking for. What? My work here is done. The hell did you do? Wait, damn you! Follow them! We done? We done? Are they gonna talk? Sometimes they wait a while to talk. I don't think they're gonna talk. Where the hell did they go? Find them. They can't have gotten far. As soon as I say I don't think they're gonna talk, they talk. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, guys. First of all, dude, how did they not see Melchior or hear Melchior standing right behind them? That doesn't make any sense. Number two, look at this! This is where the monolith is in a thousand years' time, and these are all flower beds and stuff, and it looks a lot prettier in a thousand years' times. Anyway, um number three. Um, we have some stuff to look at. Right, uh... Let's get this Cassandra Sash. And... I think you're done with everything? Yeah. I'm gonna... Put you on that. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um... You need a new ring. Yeah, take that one, sure. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, um... Melchior's fun, isn't he? Illusions. Hmm. And, um, Aizen seemed to be the target of those illusions. I wonder who the people in the illusions might have been. Ha ha ha. I'm not actually going to say anything because I don't want to spoil too much um, about this game. Or else I would actually be going on about it for a while. Anyway. Damn. You sure got some speedy legs for an old fart. I'm glad to see you're okay, Zavid. It's not me that I'm worried about. Melchior was highly interested in your weapon. And yet he didn't steal it. Surely a legate like him could snatch it if he wanted to. Why bother stealing it? When you can just copy its hidden formula. Some arts can decipher the workings of other arts in a split second. And guess what Melchior's specialty is? As he left, he said, My work here is done. The Abbey must have some use for that unknown art. Who knows what? After all, they brought it here from another continent. <laughs> then we'll find out what they're after and crush it to dust. Let me ask you just one question. Why do you have Siegfried? I'm counting on you, he said. Back when I served the Exorcists, they sent me on a mission to capture Eifried. Savid, you were once their slave? Yeah. My mind was under the influence of Inominat's domain. But when Eifried aimed this baby at me, one shot was all it took to open my eyes. The fight we had after that was one for the books. <laughs> he might have been a human, but that guy was a beast. Put a song in my soul. But then Melchior had to jump in and spirit Eifried away with one of his damned illusions. That old bastard! Playing tricks with people's minds. But why'd he grab Eifried and not Siegfried when he had the chance? He probably didn't know at the time that this guy was the real prize he was after. But Eifried knew. Right before he was taken, he distracted Melchior long enough to hand Siegfried over to me. <sighs> well, that's all I know. Whether you believe me or not, is up to you. Got it. We're done here. Huh? That was easy. Eifried only says I'm counting on you to people he trusts. Is that so? So, what are you gonna do now? Gonna keep looking for Eifried. So gotta give this back and settle our score. I doubt you have much time left to get that done. I'd hazard a guess that until now, Melchior was unaware what Siegfried could really do. 
In other words, he and the exorcists weren't able to interrogate anything out of their captive. And now that Eifried's no longer needed, I see no reason for them to keep him alive. Mm. You think I don't know that? If you really want to save Eifried, you probably ought to team up with us. Nope. No can do. Why not? You lot will do anything to achieve your goals. Even kill. <gasps> Sorry, I'm a fighter, not a killer. I won't steal a single life. That's just my creed. And I've got no intention of changing our pirate creed either. Aizen and Zavid have their own creeds. They both have such strong principles, even though they're so different. Just like humans. See, how they are, they're not so different from humans. Anyway, we have a skit here, Melchior's Illusions. Well, that was sure something. Melchior and his illusions are cheats. There's no cheating in combat. What I meant is that they were awfully dirty tricks for an upstanding exorcist. And the illusion seemed so real. Had that gone on any longer, I wouldn't have been able to tell what was real and what was fake. If it can't be distinguished from reality, perhaps one could live a happier life within the illusion. Hmm. That sort of happiness can rot. You think so? But by using illusions, you can defeat an opponent without causing them any physical harm. Oh, how humane. Wow, the Abbey is so great. Lord Melchior is an exemplary man who has served Lord Artorias since before the Abbey's founding. He's done everything from logistical planning to defense strategy and even political negotiations. He shows the utmost concern, even for his opponents, so... He turned a friendly Moloch into a dragon. Th that was... Physical wounds can heal. Emotional wounds never fully fade. Yeah, but... Don't lose heart, Eleanor. Foul play is foul play, but you're talking to a demon and a witch. Who can judge? I appreciate that you're trying to console me, but as an exorcist, I cannot accept this. Have to say, I agree with Mogulu there. Um, physical wounds heal. Well, most of them. I mean, obviously, physical disabilities can be a lot more tricky. Emotional things, however, are a lot harder to spot in the first place, never mind actually... Yeah. Anyway, let's stop for today. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please let me know down below what you thought of everything that happened in this episode here today, including the Tower of Loringen, seeing some feet again, and those mysterious illusions that we came across. Hmm, wonder what they could be. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, thanks again, guys. Hope you have a great day, night, or whatever the time is for you, and I will see you next time. There she is. It's my Enough girl. Your tricks. I love her so much. <laughs> I've waited so long just to get to this point.